everyone. Welcome to another episode of What's Cooking in My Kitchen. The show I bring you mm, every so often that gives you great meal ideas for your home so you can make fabulous things for your friends, your family, your spouse, or whoever you're trying to impress. Everything I make is taste bud tested by these taste buds here. So I'm not going to bring you anything that isn't wonderful and amazing. Oh, something's almost ready now. There we go. We've got something great lined up for you tonight. Tonight we're making oven roasted short ribs with a tomato rosemary sauce. We're also featuring some seasoned potatoes to go with it. And to start with, we have a French puff pastry escargot that's out of this world. It's French, I'm Italian, but it's amazing. Wouldn't bring anything that isn't taste bud approved. So let's get started and see what's cooking in my kitchen. C'è la luna e mezzo mare, mamma mia, mi mare da te. Figlia mia, cutta dure, mamma mia, ti pensa tu. Si tu non la gangare, e tu vai, e tu vieni, sembra un sassi, ci ammane tene. Se ti piace li maccaroni, mi piace spaghetti bu. La la la, la 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 la, la la la, la 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 la, la la la, la 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 la, la 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 la, yuhuhu, paisan. C'è la luna e mezzo mare, mamma mia, mi mare da te. Figlia mia, cutta dure, mamma mia, ti pensa tu. Se tu non la gangare, e tu vai, e tu vieni, sembra un sassi. All right, folks, in tonight's episode, we're going to be making tomato rosemary short ribs. And I can assure you, they're gonna be delicious. Mmm, look at those babies, fresh from the meat market. We're gonna be using about two pounds of lean beef short ribs. We're also going to be using fresh rosemary, not dried rosemary from your spice rack. Besides that, we're gonna be using about a one pound bag of carrots a whole stalk of celery, both of which we're going to chop, and then we're going to be using up to two cans of tomato paste. Now be careful, don't use tomato sauce, use tomato paste. Besides that, we're going to be using up to two containers of beef broth, and that's going to depend on how many people you're cooking for. So come on, let's roll up our sleeves, put all this stuff together, and start cooking. Okay, so what I have here is two different cuts of short ribs. Uh, I have short ribs that are still on the bone and I have boneless short ribs. The reason that I use two different cuts of short ribs is because as this cooks, the short ribs on the bone will actually shrink up a lot, but we're going to get some good flavor out of the bones as the drippings come out and as it cooks. So we want a lot of extra meat to make this meal extra hearty. So that's why we have two different cuts of meat. So first thing we want to do is we want to take the meat and we just, uh, we always rinse our meat first. Um, and then we kind of pat it. I patted this with a with a paper towel to kind of like dry it off. And what I want to do is I want to take um, some kosher salt and just a little pinch and just kind of sprinkle it over, just so there's a little bit on the on the meat. And kosher salt does two things: it adds flavor and it also tenderizes the meat. So. Um, when this is done cooking, this meat is going to fall off the bone, it's going to melt in your mouth, it's going to be wonderful. So after we put a little kosher salt on it and we kind of press it in a little bit like this, then, you know, what I like to do is just put it right in the pan. So we're going to take our ribs first, put them on the bottom, and um, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, what we do is we space it out, that way uh, we kind of build a little bridge for... Uh, the uh, boneless short ribs to sit on when we're ready to put those in. So we'll leave those for now and um, we'll come back to this and let's uh, do our vegetables. So now that we have uh, both our carrots and our celery done, we'll kind of, I like to mix them together a little bit and try not to make a mess as stuff goes everywhere, but uh, we'll just do that. We'll mix it all up and 
and then uh, we'll take it and we'll put it in the uh, pan surrounding the short ribs. So we'll put these in our pan. We'll just tuck them in there like that. I don't know if you can see. Just kind of tuck them into all these nooks and crannies. And cover them up real good. Just like that. There, that looks nice, huh? It's going to cook down. It's going to be so flavorful. Okay, now that we have the carrots and the celery in the pot with the short ribs, we're going to take our rosemary, which is going to be our essential seasoning for this dish. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a whole sprig, actually a couple sprigs, just whole, and I'm going to put them right in the pan. And then I'm also going to take another sprig, or smaller sprigs, and I'm going to uh, pull some of the leaves off and I'm going to separate them from the stick so we can get uh, a lot of rosemary flavor all throughout the dish. So then I'll pick the stems out a little bit, at least the woody stems, because we don't want those in there. And uh, we'll get our chopping knife and we'll just chop them up a little bit and just kind of scoop them into a little, little pile here. And, and what I like to do is I like to press the pile between the knife and my hand and kind of crush them down and then just give it a little just a little chopping. Just kind of chop them up a little bit. And then throw them in the pot. And just sprinkle them all over. And they will make their way to the bottom and they will make this dish amazing. See? Mmm, this is going to be good, guys. All right, moving on. Okay, now that we have all our stuff in the pot and it's all looking pretty and it's actually smelling good already, we're going to take uh, one of our beef broths and we're going to open it up. And we're going to use the entire carton. I'm just going to pour it in. Just make sure it's even everywhere. And depending on the size of your pan, or how big a portion you want to make, will determine whether you use one or two boxes. Uh, it looks like we're only going to need one box for this size pan. But uh, this recipe, the nice thing about it is you can make it as small or as, as big as you want. So if you're feeding an army of 10 or 12 people, you have a huge pot, you just uh, cut up more meat, more vegetables, and uh, use more broth. It's that simple. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our tomato paste and we're going to scoop it out. And same thing, depending on the size of the dish you're making or the, the amount of people you're feeding will determine how much you use. I like to use probably at least a can for a meal this size, sometimes a can and a half. I just want to make sure that there's like a good paste that covers the entire top of the dish like so. And as this cooks, this will melt down and this will blend in with the beef broth and it will make a nice savory tomato rosemary broth and it'll thicken up a little bit almost like a gravy to finish the dish. So we'll just keep scooping it out here and covering our top like so. Yeah, it looks like we used almost two cans. So that should be good. Let's spread it around. So now we have all this stuff in here. I like to take another couple pinches of kosher salt and just sprinkle it across the top like so. Not a whole lot, just enough to give a little, little zing, a little added flavor. And then last but not least, we'll take our last two pieces of short rib, our boneless short rib, and we'll just kind of push them down on the top. Press them into that tomato sauce. Just like that. And twist it a little bit so we make sure the lid fits on. And just press it down and as you can see it's it's kind of overflowing. That's exactly where we want it to be because as this cooks some, uh, some of this will steam off so it'll be perfect. And this will all cook down and it will be wonderful. I can't wait. All right, guys, now that we have everything in the pot, we're ready to go. So let's put the lid on this baby, throw it in the oven, and get things rolling. Mm -mm. All right, let's stick this in the oven, get it going. I always like to put a pan down first to set my uh, short rib pan on top of. In case anything boils over, it'll catch the drippings, and it won't mess your oven all up. So we'll stick her inside here, nice and careful, right in the middle. You want your rack set uh, about middle, midway. That's fine. 
All right, now that we put our short ribs in the oven, we're gonna bake them for four hours at 280 degrees. Now, 280 degrees is kind of a lower temperature for baking, but it's about the same you find on a slow cooker. The nice thing about this short rib dish is you don't necessarily have to do it in the oven. So if it's a hot summer day and you don't wanna heat the house all up, get out your slow cooker and you can do the same thing we just did in this pan except in the slow cooker. It's gonna bake for the same time, which is about four hours. All right, let's let these babies bake and move on to something else. Hey, Tazzy, old devil. You sure toss a mean salad. But any real gourmet knows you just don't serve a toss salad with rabbit. You serve it with wild turkey surprise. Huh? Wild turkey surprise? Too bad I'm all tied up or I'd cook you up a batch. Ooh, wild turkey surprise. <laughs> Want a wild turkey surprise? I'm coming up. All right, tonight we're making an awesome appetizer to go with our short ribs. We're going to be making a French style escargot in a puff pastry. Now what we'll need for this dish is of course escargot, which you can get at any gourmet market. Now sometimes if you go to your local grocery store or Kroger's, they might not have escargot in stock. But if you go to a boutique market or any specialty grocery store, you should be able to find it. So what I do is I take the escargot out of the can, I drain it really good, and then I rinse it for about two or three minutes in ice cold water and put it in a bowl. I also then I mince some uh, fresh garlic, and then I also mince up and chop some fresh shallots. Now shallots are a great onion for cooking. They're much more stronger and flavorful than most regular onions, and it's used a lot in French cooking. So if you don't have shallots, you can use regular onions, but uh, shallots are much better. This is, if you don't know, this is what a shallot looks like. It kind of looks like a, a mini onion, but uh, you can find them too at most uh, grocery stores and gourmet markets. So then we also have some fresh thyme, which we're gonna use. And I've also mixed up some uh, compound butter. I did this ahead of time, and it's really simple to do. Uh, you can see uh, all the little goodness and flavors in there. Um, what I do is I take a couple sticks of butter, let it soften up, and then I chop up some fresh basil, some fresh parsley, uh, some thyme, and then I put about a fourth cup of uh, red wine in there. And I mix it all together. You can use a hand mixer to do this, or you can do it with a whisker or a spoon. And then after it's all blended up and mixed, you put it back in the refrigerator for oh, several hours to let all the flavors soak into the butter. This is great, and it's gonna make this recipe fabulous. And last but not least, this dish calls for dry red wine. So whenever I'm cooking, I like to use my favorite red wine, which is my red wine. It's called a Grappe Mou, and it's made right here in Detroit, Michigan. Each fall, I have Cabernet grapes flown in from the Napa Valley region here to Detroit. We crush them, we ferment them, we put them in oak barrels, and about 15 months later, we have amazing Cabernet right here in the deep. So we're going to use this, we're going to crack it open, and we're going to get this dish rolling. Come on! So what we do to start is we take our garlic, and we throw it in the pot, and we take our shallots and we throw it in the pot, and we turn on our flame, yeah, about a medium flame, and, and what we want to do is we want to sweat this. Now sweating them means you just kind of cook them by themselves over the heat, and it allows them to soften up a little bit as well as spread the flavor and get a little of the flavor out. So we'll just kind of sweat them for a minute or two, and you can bring back the heat a little bit. And we'll just let them set like that for a minute or so. And then what we'll do is we'll take something like a wood spoon and we'll just kind of uh, stir them around and crush them down a little bit. Okay, as you're sweating them, what you want to do is you want to take a wood spoon and you just kind of want to crush them around a little bit. You see they're getting a little brownness to them. 
that's all right. That's exactly what we want. We just want them softened up and mashed up a little bit. All right. All right, now that our garlic and shallots are sweated, now what we do is we add the red wine. So just add like a big glass full, just like that. And then put it right back on the heat. Okay, after you add the wine, you want to bring this to a boil. And then you want to also take your fresh thyme and add it as well. And just kind of stir that in there and press it down a little bit. So bring this to a boil, a nice roaring boil. And after it's boiled for a minute or two, then you want to reduce your heat and simmer this for about 20 minutes. All right, the next step in our appetizer is we have to make the puff pastry covers. So what I've done is I've taken some puff pastry dough, which you can buy in the freezer section at any grocery store, and I take out a sheet and I let it thaw. Usually when you try to open the sheets, they tear and it's a mess. So what I do is I just roll it up in a ball and then uh, work it a little bit. And if it's a little dry, you can use a few drops of water and you just work it around until it's all mushed together and smooth and even and consistent. And then you just pop her down and we're gonna roll them out the old-fashioned way. All right, so what I do is I roll out the dough and push it down real good, circular motion, and then take an old-fashioned rolling pin and just roll it out. Now if the dough sticks at all, you use a little flour and you just put it on your roller like this. And roll some more. You want to keep rolling it till it's about an eighth of an inch thick, and you can get four four inch circles out of it. There we go. So we'll take our four inch cutter. There's one. There's two. And let's see if we can get three. Yep, we got three. So we'll take these ones out, set them off to the side. You want to put a little flour on one side just so it doesn't stick to the counter. And let's see if we can roll this out and get one more out of it. It should be thin enough and we should be able to get our last one. Yep, there we go. All right, moving right along. Now that our wine and herb mix is done simmering, and God, it smells good. Mm mm mm. Oh, it's going to be good. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to take our escargot. And we're going to take our wine herb mix here, piping hot off the oven, and we're going to pour it right over the escargot just like this. All that, all the herbs, everything right in there. And what this is going to do is this is going to season the escargot really nice. It's not going to actually cook them all the way. It's just going to kind of sear the outsides, but that flavor is going to get right in there because it's piping hot. All right, so we'll let this sit up for a couple minutes. Now that our escargot has had a chance to sit for a bit and let that wine and all those herbs soak into it, we're going to take four stoneware cups and this is what we're going to put the escargot in to bake in the oven. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the escargot and we're going to put equal amounts into each pastry dish and then we're going to put a lump of our compound butter right on top, finish it up with a puff pastry top and we're going to bake it. So let's do it. Let's take our escargot, and we'll take even amounts here, and we'll just pop a little bit into each cup. Now you want to get all these spices too, so uh, make sure they get spread around real good. All right, now that we have even amounts of escargot in each of the cups, we want to plop in a nice big jumble lump of this compound butter. So it's just real easy, you just take a nice lump of it and just put it right on top, just like that. Just a nice heaping spoonful. Don't really have to measure it. It's all going to cook out and it's going to be great when it's done. All right. That looks pretty good. All right. Now that we have our escargot in the cups, we have our compound butter. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to take the rest of our wine sauce and we're going to put equal amounts into each cup. Just pour a little bit in there, a little bit in there, a little bit in there. And the rest in there. 
Okay, to put the caps on the escargot, it's fairly simple. What we're gonna do is we're gonna egg wash them first. That'll give them a nice golden brown flaky crust when they're done. And it's also gonna help them stick to the top of the cup so as it's baking, none of the juices or anything get out. It all stays in there and it's covered and sealed like a little bucket. So we're gonna take just an egg yolk. We don't want the white, just a yolk. And we're gonna take a brush and we're just gonna crush it up and mix it around till it's all yellow. There we go, see that? All right, so let's take our first cap and we're gonna stretch it out a little bit. We wanna stretch it so it overlaps the cup. All right, so we're gonna take the bottom side, we're gonna put a little egg wash on there. Just like that, paint it up real nice. All right, and then we're gonna flip it and we're gonna stretch it over the top. like so. Now, it's a little tricky. Fingers are gonna get a little slimy. That's all right, it's all fun, right? So once you work it over to the uh, sides, you're gonna kinda pull it down like a pot pie. Here, let me show you. See, you just kinda, you work it around, you stretch it. And I like to use the sides of my hands and just kinda work it around in a circular motion. And you're also pressing it to the side of the cup. Just like so. There you go. All right, and once you have a good seal and it's pressed evenly, just get a little pad on top to make sure it's down all the way. And you take your egg wash and you finish it. You just paint the top. There we go. Yeah, just like that. Paint that baby up nice and even because we don't want any spots to burn or get crunchy. We want this nice and flaky. All right. And there is your egg washed cup, escargot puff pastry, ready to go in the oven. I'm going to do that with the other four and we'll get cracking. All right, let's put our escargot in the oven, get these babies going. We want to set the oven to 375. Yeah, it's 375, 400, in that range is fine. We're going to cook them for about 18 minutes. So we're going to just pop them in there. Make sure your oven racks are right in the middle and close that door and let the oven do its job. All right, we're doing good here, but no fabulous meal would be complete without a great side dish. So tonight we're going to do a little rosemary garlic buttered potatoes that we're going to baste with the sauce that comes off our short ribs. So, it's a real easy dish to make. I already washed some uh, big red skin potatoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them and kind of cube them. You don't want to cut them too small, kind of in fourths or eighths or however you want to say it. So we just take our potato and cut it in four ways, two times like that. And put it in, put it in the pot. Take another one, same thing. Cut it in half. Cut it in half and. Cut them in half again. Real simple. There we go. Throw those in the pot. So we're going to do this with all these potatoes here. I'm using uh, six potatoes. And uh, we're going to boil them for about 15 minutes or so. Get them nice and soft. And then when we're done with that, we're going to uh, add our stuff for our sauce. All right. While our potatoes are boiling, we're going to get our seasonings ready. So for this dish, we're just going to use uh, some garlic another shallot, some butter, and some fresh rosemary. So we're just going to take three large cloves of garlic and we're going to slice them and dice them. 
I like to slice them long ways about three or four times nice slices and then I dice them long ways just get them nice and thin I always rest my knife up against my knuckle like this that way and I tuck my finger back when I'm holding it that way I can come straight down like this all day long and then I just force the vegetable or the herb or whatever I'm cutting forward with my thumb like this. And cut all day long and feed it forward and I'll never risk cutting myself that way. Just a handy little tip. Alright, so we got our garlic all minced up. I'm going to do the same thing with our shallot. I'm just going to slice it and quarter it like that. And quarter it again. And bring it down here. And same thing. Now shallots, when you slice them, they might make you cry a little bit because they are a very strong onion. But my God, the flavor they give your meal. Now like I said, we're going to be using fresh rosemary for this dish. And that's really what's going to give our potatoes their bold flavor. Now I always like to use fresh herbs when I'm cooking. Now you can buy store-bought, you know, dried leaves in the jar. You know, the kind of things you get in a spice rack. But if you can get fresh, always get fresh because the flavor is just so much better. And, and you might ask yourself, well, how do you know it's fresh? Well, the way I know it's fresh is I take a bit of it like this, stick it under my nose, mmm, smell it. This is fresh. So we take our rosemary, and we, uh, what we want to do is we separate the leaves from the stem. The easiest way to do that is you just grab the rosemary by the top, and you just pull down on the leaves, and they really come right off pretty easily. I just pull right off. Now another way you can tell rosemary is fresh is that the leaves actually pull off. What you want to watch for is when you go to buy rosemary, if you see a lot of leaves laying in the package on the bottom, or if you shake the package, you see leaves falling off the stem, then you know that rosemary really isn't fresh because when rosemary starts to dry out, the leaves will fall right off the branches and you won't have to do anything to pick them. You know, all you got to do is shake the branch and they'll fall right off. So now we have a nice little mound of rosemary there. That should be good. We'll uh, finish boiling up these potatoes and uh, move right along. All right, the potatoes are done boiling. Been on for about seven, eight minutes. It's really long enough. These ones cooked up real fast. So what I'm going to do is take a strainer and run some cold water. And I'm just going to plop them in the strainer like that. And I'm going to rinse them off real good. Because they got a little bit of starch on them and some bubbly funkies that come off the potatoes. So just rinse them real good. Now that we strain the potatoes, we can put them back into the pot. Just pour them back in like that. Shake them around a little bit. Get rid of our strainer. So now we're going to add our spices. We're going to add our garlic, our shallots, our rosemary, and our butter. So, just I cut the butter up into little pads. It just melts a little easier that way. Just throw them in there. And our rosemary, going to sprinkle it all around. Just like that. Same thing with our shallots. Just sprinkle them all around. And our garlic. Yep, making a little bit of a mess here, but what kind of cook would I be if I didn't make a mess, huh? All right, so this is what that's going to look like. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little olive oil. Now, I never measure anything. Some cooks measure stuff. I really don't. So I just, well, I'll do with a pot like this, we'll do like a three count. How about 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, yeah, we'll go 1,004. There we go. A little olive oil. And we're also going to do just a little, not a lot, but a little red wine. Bless it a little bit like that, a little blessing with the red wine. All right, now that we put everything in our pot, it should look like this. Got our seasoning in there. As you can see from the hot potatoes, the butter's already started to melt. Olive oil and the butter's mixing around. So we'll put this on medium heat, yeah, about low to medium. And we won't need to cook this very long, maybe about three, four, five minutes, that's it. Just till the butter melts, everything blends together, and it, it heats up, starts to simmer a little bit. The potatoes are already cooked from the boiling. 
Uh, I took them off the heat just a little, little early, maybe a minute or two early, just so the potatoes still had a little crispness. So when we cook them in the pot here with the spices, that that Christmas will that Christmas. It's not Christmas. That <laughs> crispness will mellow out a little bit, and the potatoes will be soft. So we'll let that cook here, and uh, we're almost done. God, I'm getting hungry. I don't know about you. So let's go. All right, while everything's cooking away here, John here, Chef John, is going to take a little wine break. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This really is, bar none, the best wine ever. Honestly. Not just because I made it, but this is the best Cabernet ever. If you're interested in a bottle, you can hit me up on Facebook or email me and I'll think about whether I want to part with a bottle or not. It's so good, I really hate to give any away. I think I only have about 50 bottles left. It's great and it's fun making wine. Every year I order about uh, you know, 8 or 9 or 10 cartons of grapes, bushels of grapes that come right from Napa Valley. They come from the Rutherford you know, Appalachian, if you're familiar with that. We crush the grapes here. We don't stomp on them like Lucy, but we crush them up. We ferment them. We put them in American and French oak barrels. And our last batch, this particular batch here, stayed in oak for just under, yeah, yeah, about two and a half years. About two and a half years. And I like my wines very, very bold and flavorful, but I like them to have a real nice smoky, caramely oak flavor. So by putting them in the barrels a little extra longer and just taking your time and letting them ferment on their own in a dark, cool place, you get fabulous results. So I'm going to finish sipping on this wine and... We'll be back to cooking in just a second. Mmm, God, that's so, so good, so good, so good, mmm. All right, let's check and see how our short ribs are doing. They've been in the oven about three, three and a half hours. Take a look. Ooh, they smell good. Let's see what we got going on here. Mmm. Oh yeah, those look good. Mmm. Gonna eat good tonight, guys. All right, we'll put her back in the oven here for just about another 15 or 20 minutes. And we should be all set. God, this sure looks good, guys. Mmm, God, this smells good. This is gonna be Fabulous, these potatoes are gonna rock. All right guys, I think our short ribs are done, so let's take them out of the oven and see what we got here. Oh, very, very hot, very hot. There we go. Let's see what we got. Shazam! Woo! Oh wow, those look fabulous. All right, so what we're gonna do now while these are still sizzling is we're gonna finish off our potatoes. We already pre-seasoned them. So now we're going to add some of the tomato seasoning that's uh, come off the short ribs from cooking. We're going to add some of that sauce into these, mix them around, and we'll be good to go. So probably the best way to transfer the sauce from the short ribs to the potatoes is with a ladle like this. So we will just kind of stir things around a little bit, kind of loosen stuff up, push some things off to the side here, and we'll just get a ladle full of this nice sauce. And we'll just pour it right over top of the potatoes. And we'll do this about, I don't know, five or six or seven times until we get a nice flow going on here. If you get some carrots or celery or other vegetables or spices that we put in this while we're cooking, that's all good. It all ends up in the same place, right? And it should look like that. Mmm, very good. All right, so let's check on our escargot and then we can... Uh, Get this all plated up and start to eat. All right, everyone, I think the escargot are done, so let's take them out and have a look. Oh, wow, those look beautiful. Look at those darlings. Look at those guys. Whew, hot, hot, hot. Oh, my God, they smell fabulous. All right, well, it looks like we're getting ready to eat, so let me uh, plate this stuff up and uh, see what we got. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it, folks. Another amazing meal from my kitchen to yours. Oven-roasted short ribs with potatoes and puff pastry escargot. It's going to be fabulous. God, I've said fabulous a hundred times in this episode. Hmm, must be fabulous. Must be true, huh? 
Anyway, I'm going to dip into this and rip it apart and eat every little last bit. Don't be jealous. I know you are. You can have this great meal in your kitchen too. Just follow these simple directions and if you want the actual recipe, just send me an email and I'll be glad to send it your way. Until next time, ciao! I had no idea you were such a good cook. Yeah, I cook even better than I dance. Wink. What's your secret to the cooking, not the dancing? Tee <laughs> It's an old family recipe. Wink. Mm. Well, I am impressed. You can invite me to dinner anytime. Wait. Yes! trumpetta ma come si suona alla trumpetta pa 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 la trumpetta zinga zingu violina plinga plingu mandolin tu 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 u saxofona u friscalette tipiti tipiti ta ehi compare ci vuoi suonare chi si suona alla trombona ma come si suona a la trombona, a fuma fuma la trombona, pa 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 la trombetta, zinga zingu violina, plinga plingu mandolin, tu 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 tu, u saxe vola, u friscaletta, tipiti tipiti ta. Tipiti tipiti, tipiti tipiti ta.